Ladies and gentlemen, Side Strafe back with some more World of Tanks. And yes, it has been a while since I've posted any gameplay footage of this title on my channel. Kind of needed a bit of a vacation, if you will. And in some cases, I think I still do, but uh, I had this footage lying around. I thought I'd share it. This was from earlier in the week. I was playing with uh, Bombadil in this match. And then the following two matches, I'm rolling solo. But... Uh, here we are, T-30, going to roll up to my typical tank destroyer position. It's uh, good for camouflage rating and hull down shenanigans. Especially with this turret, uh, most of the time, especially when you're higher tier, not much getting through the turret from the front. So for me, the beginning of the match is probably the most important. You're trying to see who's on the other team, and not by looking at their name, not by looking at their tanks, but by how they behave. Uh, are they impatient? Are they overly aggressive in the first few minutes? Are they suiciders? Not just suicide scouts, but suiciders in general. People that maybe have XVM, that don't like their team. People that don't like the maps. There's so many reasons that people will just rush out and get themselves killed. They'll just chance it because they don't want to deal with something. It happens all the time, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, in this case, they had a suicide scout. Not much more than that. But uh, I, I really like to see if we can put a big dent in the team early on, then push forward, get more aggressive mid to late game. But here you see a, a tree fall over to the left here, but uh, I got to go right and... <laughs> one shot, one kill. Got to love the power of the T-30, especially on a light tank. But uh, those trees will not protect you for too long. However, I know that uh, there was some something that went down to the left here. And this is why it's best you not knock down a tree. Now, I could have gone for a blind fire. But with this tank, I don't like to do it because the reload time is so bad. Got a Jagtiger 88 moving up. I'm going to use him as a scout. Hopefully, I can keep him alive. Uh, maybe the rest of us here. He's already taking fire. I'm saying, come on, spot somebody. There's got to be somebody to your left. And there he is, that Centurion. I knew that I could aim anywhere on the front of his hull. Very weak armor. And uh, hopefully we've got Bombadil still on the other side there. There it is. Takes him out with his M103. Side shot. Nothing worse than getting lit up in that forest, especially if you're not behind cover. There's a couple of houses and whatnot in the back, but... Not enough to save him. And another tree goes down, except this time I'm spotted. Probably from this 34. Two, and very lucky Coppola shot on that one. That could have easily missed. As it was more reactionary than anything else. I'm spotted, so I have to be careful here. They do have a piece of artillery. That's something we need to think about as well. And I believe we've got an IS-3 and then the scout obviously rolling up. And a uh, tank destroyer left, which I don't really have eyes on. Bombadil's more so watching uh, the left flank. So we have uh, nice lines of fire here, some good firing lanes to kind of protect each other's flanks if need be. You can see they are fighting on the other side of the map as well. So I'm keeping that in mind. Eyes always on the mini-map. Trying to maintain constant communication over team speak with Bombadil, focus firing on targets. But this 152, I just can't get a shot because of the wreck in front of him. But uh, Bombadil has a solution, so does somebody else. So I'm not too worried. I see the size 3 and 132 rolling forward. I want to escort them. Bombadil kills off the 152 with his M103. And uh, I know that we've got some decent cover here. I can hide behind this house if I need to. There's a couple of wrecks, maybe. Uh, I'm always thinking about where my cover's at. And besides that, we're rolling through tree cover, so we can stay camoed up. Target, contact left, 152 again. And just wanting to make sure, taking the time to get that aim reticle down. Jag Panther. I don't know if I'm going to be able to reload in time, considering that he's spotted by quite a few allies at this point. Not happening. No worries. They're down to three. One being artillery, and I believe the other two big tanks, 
34 and the 30 are on the other side of the map. Artillery spotted. I love when they start to run away. They're like, well, let me go try to reposition and somehow survive. Not today, good sir. Not today. Somehow I managed to get him on the move with this uh, fairly inaccurate gun. It has its moments. But, uh, you know, better to take the shot than leave the game filled with ammunition that you didn't use. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, let's roll forward, stay together. I'm talking to Bombadil about how we just need to be careful. You never know. Sometimes you run into uh, some sort of tank ace that uh, knows what they're doing. Has a good position. T-34, as you can see, has taken out three targets. Uh, this 30 we've lit. And we've got some other people rolling towards him while we cap. So, not really any real reason to lose this one, but still. We're just going to roll in here and go for a flank if we can. I see him pushing back. I went for the shot. I didn't take the time to fully aim because by the time it would have, he'd have been behind the house. So I just did some guesswork on it. Didn't pay off, but uh, you never know. And he's done. At this point, we are winning via cap. Enemy doesn't have a chance, but we figure maybe let's go head back to the base and uh, see if we can at least get a shot or two on them. Not the fastest tanks on the planet, but not bad for uh, what they are. And 100% on the cap. Not able to take him out, unfortunately. All in all, not a horrible game, though. Nothing crazy, but uh, still pretty fun. We had those lanes secured, and we were able to push up through Sherwood Force without too many problems. But uh, the next match is going to feature the M4A3E2, also known as the Jumbo Sherman. Now, you're going to want to pay attention to the fact that I'm only using the first turret and first 76mm main gun on this tank. The reason for that being is the first turret has way better armor. You're going to lose some view range and some traverse speed. And you're going to lose the ability to get the second 76mm gun. But I don't know if it's worth it. The second 76 has a, a little bit better rate of fire, but not much. And the penetration and damage is the same. And the view range is better and so is the turret traverse but I don't know if it's gonna make enough of a difference for this tank um, its play style is a little bit closer to that of a heavy it's got a lot more armor remember this is the up armored Sherman tank uh, pretty beast at the front especially if you're tiered like I am here so I don't know I almost think that the first turret is the way to go especially if you got a fully uh, trained crew with a gun rammer but anyway I'm still experimenting with it Anyway, rolling forward, you can see that we've got this VK who's pushed up a little too far. He's dealing with multiple hostiles, and I'm wanting to help him, but uh, I can't really get a clear shot. Now he's taking some fire from the rear, and I'm thinking, okay, can I help you with that problem at least? But he gets taken out, so I'm thinking, well, I don't want to further expose myself. I've got some really nice frontal armor, especially angled. But uh, I don't want to have to deal with multiple threats because eventually they start to figure out where your weak spots are at. And right now I'm just feeling these guys out, seeing what kind of guns they've got. I know what the Churchill's got. I know what the Panzer IV is probably rolling with. But this KV-1S uh, appears to not be upgraded. So I think I can deal with all of them. And look at this Panzer IV. As he comes around the corner... It seems that he hasn't figured out which direction you're supposed to face your gun when you come around the bend. Uh, maybe he didn't get the memo about the barrel being the part that shoots out the projectile. I don't know what he was doing, but uh, anyway, this AT-2 is in the middle here. And he's only got a six-pounder main gun, so against my armor, there's not a whole lot he can do at the front. However, I'm thinking, well, should I track him? Should I help out? Uh, I was going to go for a Coppola shot. I gave up on it. I was like, you know what? This guy can't really mess me up too much. So I'm going to go ahead and focus on these targets on the right. KV-1S just sitting there and taking this damage. And uh, I just keep throwing shots at him. I'm like, hey, man, you want to sit there? That's fine by me. I'm not worried too much about my track. I'm not going to waste the repair kit. I might need it for later. And I'm pretty much a bunker at this point. Now, here is where I make a bit of a mistake. I'm thinking about looking at these targets to the right. And we still have 
the two tanks over there. They're very low on health, though, so they're playing a little bit more safe. And I'm thinking, okay, I can flank this guy. He just fires his shot. I put one into him, but I don't do a lot of damage. And now he knows what's up, and I haven't taken the time to flip my tank around. So I take one right into the side. Not a good plan there. And the Panzer IV throws one at me from the other side. So I have to come back around and now deal with these threats again. He keeps just poking out. He's uh, a feisty one, that's for sure. But somebody else finishes him off. We don't really have to worry about him too much. But we've managed to roll most of their team. So I'm going to start moving forward a little bit. Artillery comes in just missing me. T-49 out in the distance, and I am pretty low on hit points, though, so I don't want to get too ballsy. KV, and then we see a T-28 there. I'm like, ah, oh, snap. All right. KV-1, pushing back, but I'm going to roll back here and try to deal with this T-28. I'm not actually taking the time to aim, and I need to. See there, another mistake. I didn't take the time to aim. I'm like, okay, side strafe. Chill out. He can't damage you. Just let him have it. And he decides to sit there. I wanted to aim for his rear engine compartment, maybe, but I couldn't get the shot. Something blocking it. But no worries. We take him out anyway. So all that's left is the M37. And uh, I don't bother using my repair kit. No major threats at hand. So I just uh, roll forward and try to look at some of the damage on my tank. I think some of it has disappeared because I took so many shots. And that's a decent round in the jumbo. Now again, higher tier with that tank, it's it's beast mode. But um, any other games, sometimes it can struggle. But steel walling it, of course, in high caliber. So while we transition into the next match with the M36, I want to talk a little bit more about the screenshot contest that's been ongoing and utilizing the Duckster website. I'll have a link in the description below if you missed out on the video talking about the contest. It's filled with uh, everything you need to know about it and how to enter. But make sure you check that out for a chance to win some gold. There's about a thousand gold for one lucky European player and a thousand two hundred and fifty gold for a lucky North American player. And uh, you know, if this works out, then we might look at doing more events and contests in the future. But uh, with that said, again, you only have until Friday the 28th of this month. Coming up soon, running out of time. Very simple contest to take a nice screenshot within World of Tanks, a raw screenshot. No editing is allowed, so please keep that in mind. I want this to be fair and open to everyone. But with that said, back into the game, the M36. So at this point, we're midfield. I'm just trying to maintain a, a hull down position as we have a couple targets wanting to cross the line here, it seems. Nice shot to the broadside. Easy target there. And it looks like we've got a couple of threats on the island. You always want to be careful of that. I've got some housing cover that I can use if I want to push up a little bit more, but I'm also worried about what's on the left. I don't want to get... Uh, hit by something in the bushes but they are running out of tanks so I'm feeling a little bit more confident about moving up and uh, there's a nice juicy target just sitting out in the open I'm wanting to angle myself a little bit to do some side scraping if I have to and he's not even looking at me love it just sit there yeah that's fine by me that is completely fine by me when I don't even have to move my tank I can just sit and wait for that reload. That's always a good time. As we continue this push here. Other targets sighted, but not for long. We do have a Hellcat that seems to be underground and uh, <laughs> rolling up. Poor lead on my part. Shot also goes low, I think. And, well, he's tracked now. Can I reload in time? There she is. They've got three units left, two of which, three, nope, they're all on the other side now, so we can safely move forward and see if we can perhaps take one out before the rest of the team does. Now, you always want to be careful. You never know. Sometimes you run into a game where you have some sort of tank ace, like I said before, that just manages to wipe the remainder of your team 
and uh, that's always embarrassing. And you know, sometimes I'm sure you have been the person that's been able to do that. I've done it a couple times, but uh, yeah, you never want to uh, underestimate your opponent. But in this case, I'm feeling pretty confident. We got enough tanks, I think, and uh, as long as they're lit up, I know that my gun can handle whatever's over there. We just need to light them up. But as you can see, he's down. I'm thinking, oh, crap. Well, if he got lit, then I'm probably lit as well. So I'm just chilling here in the woods. Maybe I can utilize my camouflage and my binoculars. Hopefully, uh, one of the scouts can light them up. We still have enough tanks, so I'm not too worried. But uh, you never know. There's no need for me to rush in, especially in a game where I have a gun that's going to reach all the way across the map. And, uh, he's in the way, though. See, I'm not sure why he decided that running all the way up to that enemy tank is going to be a good idea. It did nothing but block my shot. Anyways, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me on another World of Tanks video. I will definitely see you on the next one.